Hi guys, this is Sandesh Bordonkar from Acharya Drone and here is my first video on this channel. I wanted to start by reviewing the AirMap app which is likely the best solution available currently to novice drone users that want to fly for fun. So let's begin. Flying a drone is a great fun activity but also has quite a bit of legalities involved. If you are caught flying in a wrong airspace, the fines involved are humongous and might potentially also include a jail term. So you have a drone, but you aren't really sure that if you fly it outside your home or a park nearby, you aren't violating any of the norms set by the Federal Aviation Administration or the FAA. So all the novice drone users really need is a handy resource, like some kind of a ready map that can tell us whether a given area is a go or a no-go zone. For those flying drones for fun, or as legally stated, recreational purposes, which means that you aren't flying it for commercial purposes such as real estate photography or professional filming, I find AirMap app really useful and most easy to use. It is available for both Android and iOS devices and there is also a desktop version of it available for which I'll leave the URL in the description below. For this review, I'll use the desktop version. Here's how the AirMap interface looks like. In the search window, you can type in the area of interest or the area where you want to fly your drone. If the area doesn't show up, simply drag the map to your desired location. I'm currently zoomed into the San Francisco Bay Area, which is considered to be one of the busiest airspaces in the country. Next, you go ahead and select your mission, which gives three different options. Since this video is only meant for recreational users, I'll go ahead and select the first one that says, Fly for Fun. Now once you bring up the area you want to fly your drone over, you will see a combination of circles and polygons in different colors. Each of these shapes and their corresponding colors carry a unique information about that airspace. Let's go over them one by one. The most of any shapes you will probably find in your area of interest is the orange circles, which means that this airspace is within the 5 miles radius of an airport. If you wish to fly your drone in one of these orange circles, you would need to call up the airport and notify them of your flight plan. The airport might grant the permission or deny it depending upon your proximity to the airport and also the air traffic in that area at that given time. Next, as you zoom further into the app, you'll notice tiny yellow circles, which essentially indicate a radius around designated heliports. In most cases, these are hospitals. If your flight path is close enough to one of these helipads, you would need to call and notify them as well. And how do you know that you are close enough? Well, once you identify your area of interest on the map and are sufficiently zoomed in, you will see the advisories displayed like this which also contain appropriate phone numbers to call. If the advisory icon is in red color, it means your area of interest is a critical zone and you probably should not be flying there. A green color on the advisory icon means that you are good to fly, while a yellow color means that you have got to call up the appropriate numbers and notify them of your flight plan. Then there's another type of airspace, such as the one shown over here. The blue polygon indicates that this airspace is a super critical one, typically reserved for high profile military installations or high security zones such as the White House or Camp David. As you might be able to guess, these areas are a big no for any kind of drone activity. And if you are in one of them thinking of flying a drone, you should quit that idea now. Next, there are airspaces that fall under the jurisdiction of National Park Services or the NPS. For instance, this area is Yosemite National Park and you can see a giant red polygon marking its boundaries, meaning it is illegal to fly drones in this area. If you zoom in, You'll also see a red advisory being displayed alerting you of the presence of a national park. Another unique airspace that you'll encounter, especially if you want to fly your drones on a sea coast, is this fuzzy red polygon here. This airspace is similar in color to the one reserved for national parks, except that it covers only the marine regions. Occasionally, you might also encounter a red solid circle on the map, which means there is a temporary flight restriction or a TFR imposed in that area. TFRs are typically imposed when there is a sporting event happening or a high profile official such as the president is visiting that area. You might also sometimes see a dark orange circle which indicates a first responder activity going on in that area. Both of these orange and red circles are a big no for drones and you might land yourself in trouble if you fly into them. AirMap updates the information about TFRs and first responder activity in real time which is a really outstanding feature on this app. You can find a detailed description of each one of these shapes and colors on the AirMap's support website. Again, you can check out the URL in the description below. One more thing, there are different ways in which you can view this map. You can also play around and select a view that you are most comfortable with. I personally like this view, which looks similar to Google Maps and therefore provides familiarity. Lastly, given all its features and usefulness, 
it is important to state that error map is not always 100% accurate. Also, there is nothing on the app that says that it is FAA certified and therefore might not be accepted in a court of law. To demonstrate what I mean by inaccuracy, let me bring up an example. Drones are officially banned in the National Wildlife Refuges, as shown on the website here. But Airmap doesn't seem to reflect this information. For instance, it is illegal to fly drones in San Luis Wildlife Refuge in California. But Airmap not only doesn't mark this area in red, there is also no annotation or absolutely any alert setup for this region. I also found Airmap inaccurate on depicting the boundary of Yosemite National Park, which seems a little bit constricted when compared to the Yosemite's restricted airspace shown on a sectional visual flying rules map or a VRF map. So in summary, I found Airmap very accurate as far as most airport related airspaces are concerned. However, for other kinds of airspaces such as the wildlife refuges, Airmap needs to update its content. In a nutshell, if I were to fly a drone, I would want to use Airmap as a primary source of screening and to obtain phone numbers of the nearby airports or helipads. To establish a foolproof legality though, I would always want to make sure to cross check with the sectional VFR map such as the skyvector.com. Although sectional VFRs are a subject matter of discussion in future videos, to introduce them briefly, sectional VFR maps are used by trained pilots for a manned flying and they provide the most complete description of any given airspace. However, they are not easy to read and it takes some practice to make sense out of them. Each of these rings depending upon their color and structure identifies a different airspace and a recreational drone flyer needs to know which ring he is located in to figure out whether or not he is flying in a legal zone. So guys, thanks for watching my first video on this channel. In the future videos, I'll try to do a side by side comparison of the Airmap app and a sectional VFR map as I take my own DJI Mavic to fly in them. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, comment and most importantly subscribe to my channel to help me stay motivated to make more such educational videos for you. See you guys in the next video.